excited to have Brooke Bendix with me today. And Brooke is with Therapology. And did I say it wrong? Almost there, Therapology. Therapology. And you know, I like, I always say it in my head first, like everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, it's terrible when I say it wrong. <laughs> I do it. Thera it's okay. Therapyology. Yeah, there you go. That's how I Work. say it. And that's how mm -hmm. I spell it. And I always look right. at it twice. Um, and it, it's not that hard. <laughs> no. It's and, not. It's brand, and it's branded on your new shirt. So I love it. Right. Yes. Um, Brooke, it is such a delight. I always do full disclosure, you're one of my clients. I've known you a long time. Um, I, I would say I knew you before you knew me um, and um, sort of watch you grow and blossom into what really is your life's passion. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's you know just been a pleasure to work with you. Um, you are someone who I don't think sleeps much. Um, I <laughs> Given the pandemic, not really. <laughs> no, and I think you wear this passion, your um, advocation inside and out. I mean, you just want to help people and your clients at all costs, and which means you work all the time and give of yourself all the time and are thinking constantly of new ways and out of the box thinking. And um, that's really what I love. You're young, you're um, it new, not new to doing this, but you're new to the ways of doing therapy and um, helping your clients. And, I, and it's been really such a pleasure to do the PR because the media is gravitating to these new, new ideas. And so that's mm -hmm. been fun. They've wanted to talk to you. Um, so I, I said, you've got to come on. We, we've got to talk today. Um, and in part, we started working together in this crazy pandemic time. And so we started working, I think, this summer. And you yeah. brought you brought this idea to me and it came out of a love that you went to camp. Uh, you went to Camp Walden where my husband grew up going and mm -hmm. you really approach working with, uh, not at the same time, um, but you, you really approach working with kids sort of out of this love of camp and, and this mm -hmm. sort of friendship of helping one another. So talk to me a little bit about sort of your background and, and, and where you really come from, your values and, and doing what you do and how much you love it. Yeah, so my love and passion for all things camp started even before I started going to camp. My father went to Camp Maplehurst uh, and my mom went to Camp Siegel and my dad was a, a camp doctor at Maplehurst or uh, yeah, Maplehurst. Mm -hmm. And so from when I was like very young, from two years old, I was growing up around camp and I just loved the, the free spirit mentality and just being outdoors and nature and the way that you build these relationships with your camp friends is so different than from mm -hmm. your home and school friends. So from a very young age, I was always about camp. And then I went to camp as a camper. And as I grew up, I never wanted to leave. I went to Walden for almost a decade. And I went to Tamarack for a year here and there too, uh, but mostly at Camp Walden. And then I was a counselor. And it's really where what pretty much shaped me uh, to be the therapist that I am because I had a lot of those experiences as being a camp counselor. And I drew from those experiences to really build my private practice mm -hmm. and the programs that I offer within my private practice. Because 
you know, in when we think of therapy and we think of mental health, we think of, I'm just going to go and I'm going to sit and I'm going to talk to somebody for an hour and then I'm going to leave. But we're, you know, as you mentioned, we're really trying to pivot and we're really trying to change that dynamic. And that's where therapyology kind of comes in. And we have this tagline of, you know, empowering the next generation. So really trying to change um, and break the stigma, not only of mental health, but what therapy really looks like. And yeah. it kind of started over the summer when camps were starting to get canceled. And we took this approach of what does camp really look like? And what are those, um, what's the dynamics and wh what do you get from it? And we took it outdoors because it was more conducive at the time during the summertime for kids to be outside and mm -hmm. get some physical activity too. And we're bringing it back. It, it was always intended to be uh, this program that was going to be year round. And we're bringing it back for winter break when kids are off on break. Uh, we'll have several different age groups uh, of small groups running and we'll be doing similar activities that you would do at camp from friendship bracelet making and, you know, making looms, um, tie dye. We really love to do. We did some tie dyeing, um, other different games now indoors as opposed to outside. So we'll be kind of sprinkling in and mixing these indoor games and activities like charades and heads up that kids will and teens will have an opportunity to connect from a social level but also these are being facilitated by people like myself who are licensed trained mental health clinicians to be able to recognize and understand what anxiety looks like what depression looks like what so you're social so sorry. You know, my, what I really liked about this concept is you're taking kids into an environment of small groups, they're masked or, you know, in a safe environment, and you're walking them through a fun activity, but you're listening and you're hearing and you're engaging them in conversations. Um, and able to facilitate and help them through those conversations and, and help solve the, some of the, the anxieties and the, the issues that they're dealing with. Um, because right. this is a, a rough time right now. I mean, these kids are isolated. I mean, they're, you know, they're not necessarily saying what's on their mind. Some are, some aren't. Um, well, and, and what we know about um, child development too, is that from younger kids and even prepubescent, pre-adolescent kids, is that this is their prime time in development. So when it comes to social skills, when it comes to building their communication skills, they're not really getting the same opportunities that they would be if they were physically in school. When they're at home, they're on their tech all the time or you know glued to a tv they're not getting as much physical activity as they normally would so you know when we play some of these games and some of these activities it's an opportunity for them to use those skills to use those social skills to communicate with each other because you know what we're seeing in our our practice is that kids are communicating via discord via snapchat um, and they're not learning, you know, I, I fear how they're going to be able to form relationships when they do get into their, in their twenties and what that is going to look like. Because as we see and have seen over the last five or 10 years is that the way that they communicate is very different than when you were in high school. A hundred percent. And I feel like this, that we're going to see, I don't know what's the right word. It's not repercussions. We're going to see long-term effects. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what those are, but I think we're going to see a lot. Of, you know, I, I don't want to be negative. We're going to see effects. How about that? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and we're going to have to weed through that. Um, how, whether, whether it's young age, a young age, the middle school, you know, 
the, the senior who didn't get all these life cycle things that happened, who's now the freshman, who then their freshman year, um, the senior in college. I mean, I have a son who's now in his second year of law school, who's only mm-hmm. seen the inside of the classroom for three months last right. year, you know, and I made a comment at Thanksgiving. I, I said, God, I wonder if you'll be in law school you know, totally virtually. I mean, will you ever really go to law school other than online? I, I, you know, I'd like to hope that next year he will, but you know, what, what will that experience be? And, and then, you know, but we, we even see this in the adult world of of Mm -hmm. people who are now working, um, online. What, um, what are you seeing in your practice with kids? Um, is it anxiety, depression? Is it all of the above? Is it isolation? I mean, I've got to imagine it's well, uh, a lot of poison. mixed. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I'd say over the last, uh, since the new school year started, I'd say the biggest thing that we've been hearing a lot of is a lack of motivation, which mm. can can translate into symptoms of depression because we're seeing, um, you know, we went from many schools were virtual at the start of the school year. And then several schools with it, you know, Bloomfield Hills, um, other school districts went for about a few weeks um, hybrid. And Mm -hmm. so they got a little bit of a a taste of kind of going back and what that looked like. And we did see, you know, some things come back, come up with teens who were very fearful of going back, even hybrid, and what that was going to look like, because they didn't feel physically safe going back into the building in the middle of the pandemic. Not to, not to throw parents under the bus, but let's for a moment. (laughs) Um, Do you find that the kids, when they're talking to you, are when they're fearful, because I think this is important, um, do you find that they're expressing that to their parents? Because I think that right now parents in this, this is something us parents have never walked through ourselves. And so I've I've talked to parents who have said, no, I want my kid in the classroom. I I want them to go back. And I will say things like, oh, how, you know, how do your kids feel about that? Because not, not always are our kids on the same page. You know, you know, I'll Mm -hmm. use my own kids, you know, they're much older, but we don't see eye to eye on everything. And my kids live in big cities and they're very, you know, thank God they're, you know, their, their cities dictate a lot of things they have to do. And, um, Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we see eye to eye on things like that, but you know, your, your kids do what you say, you say, go to school, but when the kid's sitting there and they're not comfortable, are they expressing that to their parents? Like, are you finding that? Because I, I, I think like you're such a, a great then resource to help them articulate. It's not even what they say, it's more about how they act. So, okay. you know, as opposed to what, what, you know, they're expressing verbally, but more about what the fear they pick up on. So they do pick up on a lot of fear from their parents or even parents, friends, or other family members, or even other friends too. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, picking up on that, that they really uh, don't feel so safe and feel so comfortable. You know, I get text messages or emails kind of wanting to discuss it and how, what is the best fit? I mean, we've seen nationally as a country that we're not all on the same page. This has been an individual, um, issue for, since this all started and, and so ju- we are making and there's decisions. a lot of judgment we've we've there's too much uh, there's yeah, too, I haven't even there's to that. right yeah. there's so much judgment about it and and you and I have talked about this and done media segments 
our, our poor college students where um, their roommates going out to a party and the, the other one, you know, is like- Wants to know, quarantine. Wants to quarantine. And what a, what a scary world to navigate. Um, you know, I used to say to my kids, blame, blame me. Blame everything on me. Like if you know, if you're in the situation, right. you know, just just blame it on your, your mom. I tell I still tell them that. You know, if you're looking yeah. at me, tell them your mom said you can't do it, you know. Why like, not? And right. I, I mean, like, you know, whatever it takes, like to make you feel comfortable, use me. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But I mean, when you're off yeah. at college and and you know, kids aren't being careful and you're trying to be careful because it's it's such a it, it's so hard for these kids to navigate. I mean, right. I, I I just it's it's such a tough world. These are the kind of issues that you're I know going to deal with during the camp. Um, let's talk for a second because I know your time is crazy. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard to get <laughs> it's hard to get Brooke. I I text her at all hours. Um, how the, this is an important time period. How do people um, find all the great information um, to register. And um, if you haven't seen it, this is like, I'm holding it up, but this is, you know, you can go online um, and we've done some ads, but give everyone the information and we'll post it and the links and everything. So interesting enough, we've, we've created a couple different groups for different age ranges. Um, we have a kiddos group for nine to 11 year olds. Uh, we have a tweens group, which I think has two spots still open. Um, so tweens like 12 to 14, I think the age range is about 13 or 14 year olds. And then we have a college group running too. So if your college students are home and um, they are feeling the effects of social isolation mm -hmm. and the anxiety, um, we have a pretty large group room where we're able to physically distance and we, the groups are a max of six people per group with masks on. So we're taking all the necessary precautions and it's really going to be done in a safe way for kids to be able and teens to be able to connect. Uh, so they can register on our website on therapyology.com or they can email us at info at therapyology.com. Um, we are also posting constantly on Facebook and Instagram. We, we actually um, got a couple days ago, a few different uh, DMs uh, through Instagram asking if we were going to start a group for 15 and 16 year olds. Uh, mm -hmm. We got some inquiries about starting a group for 29 year olds too. Um, you know, it's not necessarily within the demographic of <laughs> the age that we work with. But like I said, this is going to be something that we intend to carry year round because it's so necessary. And the things that I mean, we what you can what you can see is that people are looking for conversation. They're looking right. We're not just talking about COVID. I mean, one of our topics that we're talking about is uh, body image and self-esteem. And that is universal. That, yeah. that affects a seven-year-old, a 20-year-old, and a 50-year-old, just the same. We can all talk about body image. A hundred percent. And so, you know, those are conversations that we will be incorporating that don't necessarily have to do with COVID. We want to make this a, sa a physically safe space and an emotionally safe space for kids and teens to be able to talk and communicate and connect mm -hmm. that they're not getting physically in school or even at home. And that's why this is so important, whether there's a pandemic or no pandemic, mm -hmm. this is going to be continuing to happen for a long time. So I've talked to, and um, I'll let you go in a minute, but I've talked to a few of my friends who are also therapists and everybody is sort of all over the board. Some are seeing patients um, virtually and mm -hmm. some are in person. You're, and you are seeing most of your, most of your patients now in person. Mm -hmm. they, they, your patients, you know, they want to see you. Right. Um, and it really is, depends. Um, yeah. You know, if they want to come in, uh, many kids, younger kids are not, we do see a lot of young kids. So many younger kids, virtual does not really work very well. 
Mm -hmm. And so it's really a decision based on the family and for that child, whether or not in person is much more conducive than doing virtual. Mm -hmm. But we offer, you know, both options that if they're far away or, you know, they have, um, family members that they live with that are immunocompromised, mm -hmm. it's a better, it's a better option to do virtual and a safer option. But we, I am in the office and I, we are seeing kids and teens in person. So I love that. Um, I will say this, please head over to Brooke's website. We're doing a lot of media. So um, there is a lot of great content um, on the website and her social media. Mm -hmm. Um, Brooke is um, today going to be on w, WJ with Brooke Allen for a huge long segment um, and mm -hmm. often with Brooke, um, but you're posting all those media links and, you know, what's great about the topics you're talking about, there's no deadline to them. They're, they're media mm -hmm. um, resources um, talking about um, I think there was only one that we did, which um, had to do with football games, which the truth of the matter is, you know, might've had a deadline that weekend, but the, the truth is the topic itself uh, really dealt with college and um, sort of that FOMO, you know, mm -hmm. kids who wanna go out, but can't go out. And I think that's an ongoing topic and one that's gonna follow when kids go back in January, they're, they're not going to, things are going to change right. a little bit, but they're not going to change overnight. And, you know, we're all going to still and have that, to that's where we really, meet. yeah, that's where we really see this need is especially over winter break when, you know, more and more people are more isolated and mm -hmm. staying home and they don't have the distraction of school. I mean, virtual school being what it is has been a distraction for kids. I mean, I, I don't like to say that it is a distraction, but it is in a way they're, they're in class, they're studying, they're doing homework. So during that break, although it's yeah. a nice break from the academics, they don't have the routine. So it's an opportunity for them to connect with other kids. And we chose these age uh, groups, these age demographics, because that's what we're really seeing is those age groups that are really struggling, you know, that nine to 11 and the tween age and the college students, they really, yeah. you know, are, are really anxious about everything going on, feeling hopeless. And we looked at this as an opportunity and a need to provide this in our community. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more as a parent of three. Um, camp was a savior. Um, I, I believe kids need downtime, but downtime is also, I say, too much thinking time um, in a way that, you know, it, it would, it's, it's a lonely, it can be a lonely time. And um, I, you know, I believe, you know, my, my law student is going to come home and I think he should play his electronic game and sit and watch TV. But, mm -hmm. you know, the other side of that is he would go see his camp friends and they would hang out and they would, you know, be in my basement and, and they just aren't doing that. They're very conscious of being safe. They all have grandparents. They all have, you know, moms and dads and, and they're not doing that. And so they're getting together mm -hmm. in the virtual world, but it's not the same. And um, yeah. so I, I know they're doing things to, to make themselves happy and see each other, mm -hmm. but um, you know, the kids who are really struggling, you're really providing um, this camp opportunity, which really allows them this conversation in a fun way, but safe way with professionals who are there to really provide guidance. Um, so head over to the website. Um, we're going to post all the links, um, you know, as we post this. Um, Brooke, it's, it's really a pleasure to work with you. Um, you, you just work your butt off. So <laughs> I do. Just, well, thank you for having me on. It's do. always a pleasure to talk to you too. I love talking about the business aspect of it. I love talking about, you know, the clinical side too. Um, you know, and, you know, as you said, I'm, 
constantly thinking about innovative ways to move the needle. You really are. You, you really, know? you really, you really are. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really fun to watch you grow your practice. I tell you that all the time. I know mm -hmm. you're, I know your mom's extremely proud. I know your dad is, I know your dad is just watching and, and felling as they say. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> uh, he is. So thank you. Have a really great day. We will talk Thanks, soon. Thanks, Gary. I all appreciate right. it. Thank you. Bye. Bye.